The MiG-21 was developed by the MiG Goyan Gurevich, the Sign Bureau in the Soviet Union. It was first flown in 1955 and entered service in 1959. Despite its age, the MiG-21 is still used by several air forces and private operators around the world. The MiG-21 is a living icon. So, let's have a closer look. The MiG-21 was designed as an interceptor. The purpose was to take off and climb as quickly as possible under the guidance of a ground-based radar and fire air-to-air -air missiles on invading American bombers. Then, the pilot will return to the base for tea and medals. To achieve this, the aircraft was built as small as possible around a big engine. The aircraft has a delta wing, which provides minimum drag at supersonic speed. The wing is quite small. A horizontal stabilizer was added to provide better handling. Like previous fighters, the MiG-21 has air intake in the nose. The shock cone controls the airflow to the engine. At low speeds, the cone is fully retracted. At high speeds, the cone is in full forward position. This reduces the air intake area and allows for the air to expand and slow down to subsonic speed before it reaches the engine. Because of the delta wing, Russian pilots call it the balalaika. It is the fastest balalaika in the world. In 1959, a prototype set a world speed record of 2388 km per hour over a straight 25 km course. Two years later, with a rocket engine added to the airframe, it set an altitude record of 34,740 meters or 113,891 feet. The MiG-21 was produced in dozens of different versions. However, they can be classified in three generations. Generation 1 was introduced in 1959. It was a day interceptor without radar. Externally, it's recognized by a small air intake cone, air data boom below the air intake, a forward hinge canopy, a window behind the cockpit, and a small dorsal spine. The main wheels have a smaller diameter than later models, but that's harder to see. The most produced version was the F-13, where the F stands for Farsirovani, and 13 stands for a K-13 infrared missile system. The aircraft can carry two missiles on wing pylons and had one internal 30mm cannon. A special feature with the early MiG-21s is the pilot escape system. When the pilot ejects from the aircraft, the canopy attaches itself to the seat and forms a capsule to protect the pilot. A drogue chute stabilizes the capsule. When clear of the aircraft, the lower attach points are released, allowing for the canopy to drift away. Then the pilot separates from the seat and the parachute opens. This system guaranteed a safe escape for the pilot at altitude over 110 meters and airspeed below 1100 km per hour. The downside was that an ejection below 110 meters was not survivable. Generation 2 was introduced in 1961 and was an all-weather interceptor. The radar is located inside the air intake cone and because of the limited space, the antenna is small and the range not so good. The weight increased and so did the power. Some distinct external changes are the air data boom has been moved up, the air intake cone is larger, the window behind the cockpit is removed and replaced by a dorsal hump housing an extra fuel tank. And a belch on the fuselage above the wing is providing space for larger main wheels. Early generation 2 variants maintain a canopy and escape system from the first generation. Later variants had a two-piece sideways opening canopy. Other changes are two more hard points under the wings, no internal cannon, but provision for a gun pod under the fuselage, and a wider cord tail fin, and blown flaps. 
which means that the bleed air from the engine compressor is blown over the flaps, increasing lift. Generation 3 was introduced in 1968 and was a fighter bomber. Weight and power increased again. The most distinct change is the enlarged dorsal hump, which increased the internal fuel load. But the endurance didn't increase because the engine was uh, more fuel thirsty. Furthermore, it got one or two internal 23mm cannons and could carry up to six missiles. The ultimate variant was the MiG 21 Bs. Since the production ended in 1985, the aircraft has undergone several upgrade programs. Romania is operating the Lancer variant, which is optimized for ground attack. And India is operating the Bison variant with upgraded radar and missiles. The two seat trainer variants were built from 1960 onwards. They are named MiG 21U, where the U stands for Abuchinie. 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 The MiG-21 is the most produced supersonic fighter in the world. In all, 11,496 units were built. In addition, China license built more than 2,400 units and gave it the name Chengdu J7 and F7. The Chinese variants have updated hydraulic and fuel systems. The MiG-21 was exported to about 50 nations. The first export customer was, surprisingly, Finland. Finland was not an ally of the Soviet Union, but they had a friendship agreement, which made it somewhat difficult for Finland to buy advanced Western aircraft. In the beginning of the 1960s, the relation between West Germany and the Soviet Union was not so good, and the Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev offered Finland the MiG-21 F-13 for self-defense against German aggression. That was an offer Finland couldn't refuse, because this was a top-notch aircraft. About 20 years later, Finland also purchased the MiG-21Bs, which is shown here. The MiG-21 saw service in several conflicts, including the Vietnam War, the Indo-Pakistan War, and in the Middle East. As of today, 345 units are still in service with 60 nations. India is the largest operator with 132 aircraft. A lesser known fact is that the MiG-21 was operated by the US Air Force. From the 1970s, the US Air Force 4477 Test and Evaluation Squadron operated MiG-17, MiG-21 and MiG-23 from Tonopah Test Range Airport in Nevada. Many of the big 21s were purchased from Indonesia. The US Air Force also bought new J-7s from China. The MiGs were evaluated and flown against American fighter jets. This program was so secret that the MiG-21 was given the designation YF-110. As I said earlier, the MiG-21 is fast. An interesting fact is that all variants have the same performance and endurance. The takeoff speed is about 400 km per hour, or 250 knots. The landing speed is less, but still very high. Maximum speed at sea level is just above Mach 1. Higher up, it will do Mach 2 with ease, provided it's in clean configuration and you use the afterburner. The maximum Mach number is restricted to 2.05 due to directional stability. The service ceiling is about 60,000 feet, but it can go higher. The coffin corner is where 500 km per hour indicated airspeed equals Mach 2.05. That's about 70,000 feet. If the speed drops below 500 km per hour, 
the engine will flame out. And if you go beyond Mach 2.05, you will lose control. The internal fuel tanks are located ahead of the center of gravity. When the fuel is burned, the center of gravity moves aft, reducing the stability even more. Because of this, the endurance with internal fuel is limited to 45 minutes. But with fuel afterburner, the tanks will be empty after 7 minutes. But this number is theory, because 1. The engine has a temperature limitation, you can only use the afterburner for 2 minutes at a time. And 2. The fuel pumps in the wing tanks cannot supply the feeder tank fast enough. The late variants have a high rate of climb that can match an F-16. A maximum climb profile will take you to 60 or 70 thousand feet in a few minutes. Then you will get a low fuel warning light, indicating you have 500 liters left. You reduce the power to idle and fly gently back to base. Your total flight time will be 15 minutes. How is the MiG-21 to fly? As I said, all the variants have the same performance, but there are differences in handling. The first generation, like the F-13 variant, is nimble and easy to fly. The two-seaters are also popular. But as the size of the dorsal fuel tank increased, and more equipment was installed, the weight increased, and the aircon became bulkier and less stable to fly. The SMT variant had the largest dorsal tank of them all. It was unpopular with the pilots because it was so much harder to fly. The cockpit is not organized. There are switches everywhere and it takes many days to learn the location and correct position of them. The visibility is not good and it becomes worse when the two-piece canopy was installed. There is a rear view mirror, but the view angle is restricted. But at least you can see the tail fin. The two-seaters have a telescope for the instructor in the rear seat, and that works well. The ailerons have hydraulic actuators and are very sensitive. The rudder is manual and becomes very heavy at high speeds. The pitch control is good. The tail planes are all moving and share a hydraulic actuator located inside the tail fin. At all speeds, you will have the same stick force for the same G-load. Since the later models are less stable, they have a stabilizing system in pitch and roll. When flying in a straight line, the MiG-21 is very fast. But when you start turning, the delta wing will create a lot of drag and the speed will bleed off rapidly. The rate of turn is modest at high speed, but as the aircraft slows down, it becomes more agile. And this can be a surprise for the opponent. This MiG-21 Lancer belongs to the Romania Air Force and is flown by a very skilled pilot.
2021 is relatively easy to fly, but it's demanding to land. Even experienced pilots say that every landing is different. One pilot told me that it's trying to kill you on every landing. This is the end of part 1 about the MiG-21. In part 2, we will take a look at some of the quirks and features of the MiG-21. Do you know that it has a break in the nose wheel? And that it's pneumatic? Until then, thank you for watching, have a wonderful day and happy landing!